In this video, we're going to take a look at one of the file upload vulnerability labs from Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Web Shell Upload via Obfuscated File Extension. Since we've already been through a few of the labs, I'll not spend much time explaining what file upload vulnerabilities are. Let's just say they arise when web applications don't properly validate uploaded files and they can allow attackers to upload malicious files and execute code on the server. That being said, we do want to review the information which is specific to this lab. We've seen in previous videos when we try to upload a PHP file, it'll often come back and say this needs to be a valid image, like a JPEG or a PNG file, and there are various ways that this check can be performed, one of which is just by checking the extension at the end of the file name. However, if the validation code is case sensitive, so if it's checking for .php, we might simply be able to use some capitalization to bypass that check. And then depending on how the server is configured, it might actually just treat that .php with a capital letter in it, the same as a normal PHP file. So capitalization is one way that we could potentially bypass a filter like this. Another is to use multiple file extensions. So let's say that we have exploit.php.jpg. Maybe the validation will actually split on a dot and then take the last extension It'll see it's JPEG and say, that's fine, it's allowed, go to the next stage. But then the next stage where it's actually saving the file might only take exploit.php and then just cut everything off after. So in other words, the validation will split on a dot and take the last element, whereas the saving of the file will split on a dot and take the first element. That's one way. Another way, as mentioned here, you could potentially have some trailing characters. Maybe we have a dot at the end. And that bypasses the first check because it's looking for .php with nothing after it. But then whenever it gets to the stage of saving the file, that doesn't actually occur. So it'll just save exploit.php. Another example is to use encoding. So maybe URL encoding or double URL encoding so that it will bypass that initial check. But then whenever it gets to the saving of the file, it will decode any of those URL encodings first. We could also add some semicolons or URL encoded null bytes before the file extension. So we have an example here, let's say exploit.asp. So whenever it gets through to the first check, it sees that this isn't a .asp file because it's going to grab the last dot and then whatever comes after it, it says, okay, it's a JPEG file, it's safe. But then whenever it actually gets through to the server, everything after this null byte and everything after it are excluded. That could also be a new line or something like that as well. And you could also try multi-byte Unicode characters, which maybe convert to null bytes and dots after the Unicode conversion or normalization. So some examples here of some characters we may want to try. Another possible defense involves stripping or replacing dangerous file extensions. So it might look for .php in the string and then just remove it. But if we put a .php in the middle of a .php, it might just remove that and then continue on with the rest of the string and not loop back to make sure that it hasn't left a .php in its place. You might have seen this with LFI or directory traversal as well, where a filter is essentially looking for a dot dot slash and it's going to remove that from a string. But if we put a dot dot slash in the middle, it's going to go through that string, it's going to see this dot dot slash and then remove it. But then what's going to be left is a dot dot slash. And similarly, maybe you have a command injection and curl is blocked. Whenever you put a curl in the middle, it's going to go through, it's going to remove curl from the string, and then in its place, it's going to leave curl. So that brings us over to the lab. Web shell upload via obfuscated file extension. The lab contains a vulnerable image upload function. Certain file extensions are blacklisted, but this defense can be bypassed using a classic obfuscation technique. To solve the lab, we need to upload a basic PHP web shell and use it to exfiltrate the contents of the secret file in Carlos's home directory. We'll submit that to solve the challenge. All right, so let's open up the lab and we'll go and log in with these credentials we've been given. So we go to my account, we're asked to log in and we'll provide our credentials, Wiener and Peter. We log in and again, we've got this avatar upload function. So I'm gonna select a basic PHP web shell and click upload. We do that and we see that, sorry, only JPEG and PNG files are allowed. So let's go and take a look at Burp Suite. We'll have a look at our post request. We'll send that through to the repeater. Click send again, just to get the response back up. And now we just want to go and play around with what we have here. So here's our basic PHP web shell, simply going to take a get parameter called CMD and whatever's provided is going to be executed using the system function. And then the results will return to us. We've also got the user and a CSRF token. So we want to go and start trying some of those things that we saw. Let me actually go back. Let's open this up as well. 
Okay, so one of the first things was to try and use a capital letter in the extension. So let's do that, click send, but we get back the same message saying only JPEG and PNG files are allowed. The next thing was to try and use multiple extensions. So can we do .php.jpg? Oh, it's not a dot. We click send and actually that has been uploaded. So let's go and take a look at it. Go back to my account, right click the image and open a new tab. But because it's showing JPEG, it's not actually going to be interpreted as a PHP script. So we can put our command in here, but it's not going to be executed. Another thing was to try and use URL encoding or double URL encoding. So that's percentage 2E. Let's try and do that. Click send and we get the same error saying we're not able to upload that. So the next thing was the null byte. So actually let me undo that. And let's just go and put a null byte percentage 00, zero before the dot JPEG. So hopefully this is going to go through to the server. The server is going to extract the extension at the end and say, yeah, that's trusted. But then whenever it actually goes to save the file, this null byte is going to mean that nothing gets included after the .php. We click send and actually this looks good. We've got shell.php. Let's go back here and just change this to shell.php. Looks good. We don't get any errors. So we'll do cmd equals ls. And there we can see we've actually got our directory listing. So we can just go up here and say we want to cat out home, Carlos, secret, and there we have the challenge solution. So I think this lab is a good illustration of how different systems and servers can process input differently. So although we have some validation occurring on the extension, it doesn't necessarily mean that once it's got past that validation, that whatever's on the other side is going to deal with that file name in the same way. Now we've talked about remediation a couple of times in these videos. Obviously one of them is checking this extension, which we've just been through. So just make sure that whatever validation script is being used is really secure, it's robust, and it's making sure that there aren't any trailing extensions, that it accounts for null bytes, new lines, and things like that. We could also make sure that we check the actual content of the file that's been uploaded and see does it have a signature matching an image. Does the content type match what we expect it to be? This shouldn't be PHP, for example, it should be a JPEG or a PNG. And we could disable execution in this directory, the avatars directory, so that even if a file is uploaded, the attacker won't be able to execute it. Another thing would be to check the contents of the EXIF data. So you could actually have a look at the EXIF data of the image, make sure that's valid. And you could also randomize the location and the file name of the script that's uploaded. So even if it is dangerous, if the attacker can't find it to execute it, that's another protection. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video on file upload vulnerabilities. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.